far, we've talked primarily about daily temperature variations. But what about seasonal temperature variations? As we talked about in the last lecture, different locations have different seasonal variations. Some locations have very little difference between winter and summer. Other locations have substantial differences between winter and summer. Some places get snow in the winter, none in the summer. Other places stay hot year round. Other places are extremely cold in the winter and extremely hot in the summer. Well, what actually determines a location's seasonal temperatures? Well, there are four main things that determine it. Latitude, proximity to water, elevation, and ocean currents. So latitude, proximity to water, elevation, and ocean currents. So let's talk about each one. So latitude. As we talked about last time, if you live near the equator in the tropical regions, you experience warm temperatures year round. So it's usually very warm, temperatures in the high 80s, low 90s even, and very little change from season to season. And this is because the sun is always high in the sky. So there's not really a big variation from season to season. If you live in the mid-latitude areas, you experience warm summers and cool winters. And this is because during the summertime, you get a lot of sunlight during the wintertime, not as much, but you still get some. And so it's warm in the summer, cool in the winter. So there's some noticeable seasonal variation. However, if you live near the poles, in the polar latitudes, you get extreme seasonal variations. And what I mean by extreme seasonal variations is you can get substantial amounts of sunlight in the summertime and in fact, anywhere above the Arctic Circle has at least one day where the sun's out for 24 hours. At least one day. And so days are very long in the summertime. However, they're very short, if at all, in the wintertime. And so summertime can become extremely warm. Wintertime can become extremely cold. So. You get very little variation near the equator. You get some variation in the mid-latitudes, and you get major variation near the poles. And this all has to do with the amount of incoming sunlight and how it changes from winter to summer. If you live near the equator, or if you live approximately on the equator, Sun is high in the sky year round. Same if you live in the tropics. Sun is high in the sky year round. The further away from the equator you get, the greater the variation is. It's low in the, it's low in the sky in the wintertime, high in the sky in the summertime. And then again, if you live right near the poles, you get no sunlight during the wintertime and extreme sunlight during the summertime. Now, here's how this actually creates seasonal variations. Pay really close attention to these next two slides. So this first one is a weather map showing average temperatures for January. As you can see, areas near the equator are pretty hot in January. As you go further away from the equator, it gets colder. But notice this. It's not nearly as cold near the South Pole as it is near the North Pole. This is because down here near the South Pole, January is their summer months. Whereas here in the North Pole, this is their winter months. Now, do me a favor. Focus your eyes right up here. This is Siberia. Look at 
how cold it is in January. Now watch what happens as I switch from January to July. Take a look at that. So going back, in January, temperatures up here near Siberia are as cold as minus 50, 50 degrees below zero. That exact same region has a temperature above 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the summertime. So you get extreme variation. And as you can see, it's not nearly as cold up here in the summertime. It's a little bit colder down here in the wintertime. A lot of this also has to do with land distribution and so on. Well, we're not going to talk about that right now. But again, if you go back, extreme cold near the poles in the wintertime, much warmer in the summertime. Meanwhile, look at the equator. So let's go back to the equator. The temperatures near the equator in the wintertime are, or well, in January, are in the 70s and 80s. So pretty mild, warm, average temperatures. If you take a look in July, not really much different. Still 70s and 80s. Not major differences between January and July. So again, the further away you get from the equator, the greater the seasonal variation. Down here near the equator, seasonal variation may only be as little as four to five degrees Fahrenheit. Whereas up here, closer to the poles, it can be as much as 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So big, big changes between summer and winter. Now, let's talk about a few other major factors on temperature. Proximity to water, and this is something we can actually see here in the Bay Area, believe it or not. Something we can actually see here in the Bay Area. So, here's how this works. Water has a high specific heat. Specific heat is the amount of heat an object needs to absorb to warm up by one degree Celsius. Water has a specific heat five times as great as land does. As a result, water needs five times as much heat to warm the same amount as land does. Consequentially, during the daytime, both land and water get the same amount of heat, but the ocean doesn't heat up as much simply because it's not getting, simply because it has a higher specific heat. Now, what this creates is an interesting situation where if you live near the ocean, temperatures don't vary much from season to season. And again, this is because oceans need to absorb a lot more heat to warm up and they need to give off a lot more heat to cool down. So they don't fluctuate in temperature nearly as much as land does. A good um, case study of this, St. Louis, Missouri, and the Azores. Pretty similar latitudes, pretty similar latitudes. The only thing different between these two areas is St. Louis is landlocked, whereas the Azores are islands. And if you take a look, St. Louis has a major temperature range. The difference between wintertime temperatures and summertime temperatures are approximately 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So winters are cold, summers are warm. On the other hand, if you live near the Azores, the variation is substantially lower. It's only 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we can see this here in the Bay Area as well. Compare San Jose to San Francisco. And what you'll notice is that San Jose 
commonly gets into the 80s and maybe even sometimes into the 90s during the summertime, where San Francisco really doesn't. San Francisco stays pretty cold year-round. Now, we'll actually talk more about that when we talk about what's called coastal upwelling in a couple of weeks. The next thing, and this one doesn't take too long to talk about, elevation. Elevation has one simple relationship with temperature. Usually, the higher you go up, the cooler it is. A good example of this is Mount Hamilton, which is just to our east here in Silicon Valley. And Mount Hamilton is home to a beautiful observatory. And the top of Mount Hamilton is approximately 4,000 feet above the valley floor. Sometimes during the winter time, the area near Mount Hamilton can get snow, whereas the hills just below can be a lot warmer and therefore they don't get snow. This is one of the reasons why if we want to go skiing or if we want to go play in the snow, we want to get away from the lower elevations. This is why we go up into the mountains, why we go to places like Tahoe or, Yos or Yosemite or um, places like that rather than hanging out here in San Jose. Like We don't go up to the Santa Cruz Mountains because they're just not tall enough. Well, there's a couple of them that might get a little high, but um, for the most part, higher up you go, colder it gets. Last thing I want to talk about are ocean currents. Now, ocean currents play a huge role in a location's temperature. And the reason why is because there are two types of currents. One type of current is what's called a poleward current. And a poleward current takes warm water from the equator and moves it towards the poles. Any coastline adjacent to that poleward current gets heat from that current. On the other hand, another type of current, the other type of current, is called an equatorward current. In an equatorward current, cold water is being carried from the poles up towards the equator. And if you live near an equatorward current, your air temperatures are going to be substantially colder. A really good example of this is one I took from a different textbook written by um, two geographers named Lutkins and Tarbuck, and they compared Rio de Janeiro in Brazil to Arica, which is just north of Chile. And if you actually take a look, both locations, very similar latitudes, they're both at just about 20 degrees south, they're both right on the coastline, and they're both at sea level. So latitude doesn't really play a difference, proximity to water doesn't really play a difference, elevation doesn't really play a difference. And yet, Arica, which is right on this cold Peru current, is on average about 10 degrees colder throughout the entire year than Rio de Janeiro, which is right next to the warm Brazil current. Now, there's other interesting implications about ocean currents and climate. Um, another very interesting implication is the area here in Arica, this is actually in an area called the Atacama Desert. Because this water here is so cold, there's very little evaporation. Hence, very little clouds form here. And so Arica doesn't actually get a lot of rainfall. In fact, if you think about how dry it's been here prior to the last couple of years, we still got anywhere between 5 to 15 inches of rain every year. Arica averages 0.1 inches of rain a year. Very, very dry. We'll talk more about that later though. So that's it for this lecture. Just a quick review in case you wanted to take a quick review. Warmest time of the day, usually 3 to 5 p.m. Coldest time of the day, right at sunrise. And this has to do with the balance between incoming sunlight and outgoing 
terrestrial radiation. And then the controls on air temperature, elevation, latitude, proximity to water, and ocean currents. All right, that's enough for today. And that's it for module two. So begin studying for the module two quiz. And I will see you all next week.